Hello my soccer universe, I would have liked to make this video a little bit sooner, but you know, better late than never. Alaska Derby winners, and that will be what the most of the video will be about, since we were there. The glorious win, glorious, but you know, it was a good win uh, overall. Um, and then we'll talk also about the Austrian Bundesliga, who actually dished quite up some surprising results. Only not probably in the way that everyone wanted, because there's one team that is still with three wins out of three, and that's of course the big one in Salzburg, but we'll talk about all of these uh, after the Derby. As I said, Derby in Linz, and while it was pretty clear who are the favorites in there, with Lusk being a European team and Blava as being a recently relegated one, uh, the city was positively buzzing, uh, especially since the first time in the Bundesliga, and if you haven't seen the video, I made a history of the Linz or Derby, uh, where you can also un understand why there is actually quite some, I don't want to say animosity, but you know, um, tension right there. Uh, both fan groups organized fan marches, with the Lusk of fan march being probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest, that the city has ever seen, marching from the main square up. I uh, was really, really, really impressive, especially the pictures and the videos that came, surfaced afterwards. Um, we arrived a teeny bit later, so I couldn't uh, see it like that, but already when you went to the stadium, and this time we wanted to enter through the fan zone because we wanted to pick up our jerseys that are included in the package, you saw already the big banner at, 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 at the entrance and so on. And then uh, the only disappointment of the evening, e evening they didn't have jerseys any, anymore, which just upset me so much. Uh, but that's a story beside that. Everything else, um, the build-up, I mean, the stadium was supposedly sold out, although there were plenty of empty seats. I think the sellout tag can be attributed probably to two things. A, that they sold out all the tickets that were given to sale, which doesn't mean that they put out everything for sale. That's number one. And number two, of course, is that uh, it's vacation time and so many of the... Um, uh, season ticket holders did not show up. So yeah, that might explain it. I would not have announced this as a sole sellout crowd, although I have to say that it looked impressive. Um, both fan sectors completely full. The most interesting fact to me was that while we were going now to quite a few games, and especially against the Viennese team, but even Sturm Graz, you always could find fans of the other team um, in our section. This time I did not see any. And that I found really, really, really interesting, which either means that there really aren't that many Blau Weiss Linz fans uh, out there, or uh, that the policy of not having any um, outside fan uh, stuff in the outside of the fan, fan, fan scale, that this was actually policed. Cannot really imagine it. But even if that was, I didn't even see anyone really going with blau weiss around me so but that actually was pleasant when the team came out the last fans presented probably one of the best tifos if not the best tifo that i've ever seen in linz uh covering the entire fan sex as a sector um you know on the backdrop you had an old picture of the city of linz probably around the time of 1908 the founding years and then two figures up there you know from back in the day to uh to today it was just great and then uh, a band maybe saying it is clear that over 115 years there's only one team which is Lusk. Blau Weiss fans uh, made their sector all in blue and white but with those plastic bands was not that great to be honest but uh, that that was a hell of a TIFO. I think this was San Siro worthy to be honest. So we get to the game and to be honest, the game started very, very nervous. Um, even to the point where I thought maybe for the first two or three minutes, Blau Weiss was actually uh, being overly motivated and attacking forward. I mean, it took about five minutes and Lusk could settle the game. Pinto missed a chance and then a little bit later, Blau Weiss could not defend uh, from a throw-in. Ball comes to Horvath, uh, goes in. I think that uh, Schul takes a shot. It is blocked. Falls to Zias. 1-0 right in front of us. And that deflated the game, believe me, believe me now, because uh, it was like the natural order has been established. 1-0, 
and there was nothing coming from Blavice from that moment on, but Lusk also didn't try all that much, and that's the one thing. There was only one chance where Mustafa was running through, but he didn't square it off to Shul, uh, or maybe he saw him too late, and then that uh, chance went by the wayside. Uh, and then a few blocked shots, but, um, you know, on one side, great, you had the game squarely under control, but I think at that point, at halftime, if you play seriously, you could lead by two or three there. Second half also quickly decided uh, a kick out from the goalkeeper uh, is intercepted on the midway line by Michael, goes to Pinto, to Schul, to Pinto, to Schul, and Schul with a really classy double touch makes it 2 0, and that's the game. There was not much coming from Blauweiss. I mean, they had one good action where Ronnie Valdo, a brilliantly played, uh, named uh, player, uh, heads it wide and then another shot that went wide. Uh, but last game scored a third, third one. Uh, again, Schul to Zierais, the two Z guys, I call them ZZ Top. Uh, but Schul had the hand there. And then Ljubicic missed a chance late. Um, as I said, it was not the most exciting game overall. It was a well-deserved 2-0 win. I feel it could have been more, to be honest. But you know, a win, first win of the season. I don't want to complain. There's lots of work to do. Um, I think you. it was good for confidence. But I think one would expect that Lask plays better. I was a teeny bit disappointed by Blauers Linz, but uh, both coaches said, yeah, you could clearly see there's a difference in quality. And I take that as well. Um, we have to see how Blauweiss Linz will perform from here. So let's look at the other rounds and actually I want to go back to midweek because that was the second, last fake picture of the um, uh, sec second round. A uh, highly entertaining 2-2 draw between Klangfurt and Wolfsburg. Uh, I think Klangfurt was overall the better team, especially in the first half where they had a one lead through Zvetko. But then in a very short period, Wolfsburg turned the game a little bit on its head through homage and Bukaya and then Vernitznik, who actually had played for Wolves, Wolfsburg gets an equalizer. Probably a game that no one will be really happy to have it 2-2. I think overall it was probably the deserved result on that one. As I said, in the third round there were quite a few surprises. It starts of course with Sturm Graz, who came off, the, off a beating against Eindhoven. Uh, only playing 0-0 against Klagenfurt, uh, Schneck red card definitely helped uh, in that uh, last man, uh, both teams hit the post, uh, Sturm had also a goal disallowed, but you know with a man less, you couldn't, but definitely points dropped for Sturm. Uh, similar for Wolfsburg against Los Lustenau, I mean uh, if you watch the game, that was such a steal for Lustenau. However, Wolfsburg in the end have to be lucky to get out with actually a point out of this. First half, they completely dom dominate. Then after the half, for the uh, sixth minute, Cissé scores out of nowhere for, Lust for, for Lustena. And that shocked Wolfsburg, who didn't have much going, but um, at least they kept Lustena at bay. And then second one, a penalty uh, given for Lustena. And Schmidt steps up, but... Tries to put it central and the goalie is there, just bats it down. I love that, that the goalie stand up. We have to stop this uh, middle of the goal uh, troubles. But you know, Wolfsburg could have played for hours and it would not have mattered. Um, but in the end, they do get a penalty, a really stupid penalty that Zimmermann converts. And it's a 1-1. Altach against Tirol had relegation battle written all over, especially with the bad start that Tirol had. And overall, Alta got to deserve it, 1-0 win, but that was hard fought because A, they had a, go a 89th minute goal disallowed. It was a foul in the pillar. And then the, f the winning goal in the 97th minute, like, literally the last kick of the game, where uh, Nuhiu's shot is blocked, that goes false to a block block again, but then on the th uh, third rebound, the second rebound, he puts it into the net and Alta get the first win of the season, which will release tensions. 
Rapid Wien follow up an anemic performance against Debrecen with a similarly anemic one against Hartberg. Yes, early on they probably should have scored. A uh, goal was disallowed for offset, uh, rightfully so. But Hartberg played that well. And Hartberg to me are the surprise team of the season. They play really, really, really well. Um, should have had a penalty in the second half. But then in the end, uh, one of the best played goals were Entrup, who has been a real life wire for Hart. Hartberg plays a brilliant pass across the box to Providence, who then uh, squares it again to Urdel, who then can, can, can pull, pull it again. In, into the empty net. It was, they, it was described as an indoor goal and I can totally see where this is uh, come, come, coming from. Hartbeck deserved that win. Now uh, afterwards, and I always hate it when these things come out afterwards because it, uh, you always get uh, a little bit the air of a excuse. Uh, Pit coach Barisic said that they're fighting all with, uh, with the flu and no one knows about it. Make that known. Because, I mean, that would uh, explain why uh, certain players could not play and why uh, it really looked not good what Rapid was showing over the last two games after having a really good start to the season. And then the last game we had Salzburg getting the win over Austria Vienna. Uh, Austria Vienna, who is definitely more concentrated on uh, Conference League qualifying, where they had a, a way win to Legia Warschau. Um, and Salzburg just were art, 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 the better team. Getting two goals. Uh, Konate was funny because he had one disallowed, and then there was so many offside decisions that they had to wait forever, blah, blah, blah. And the last one then counted, and it's 2 0. And he and the entire team celebrated with Christoph Freund, who has his last home game as a Salzburg sporting director course going to Bayern Munich and what mess is he getting himself into I have to ask but on the other side it's I think a really good sign that soccer in Austria is alive and well and yeah there you go I give you here the standings and then of course on the side the expected standings uh, loads of changes for me most notably Salzburg up top with nine points Tirol on the bottom with zero uh, and the rest is a very much in between um, there have also been changes in the expected regular season uh, standings because Rapid lost a big points there so Lask back in third uh, place uh, in in that one and Blauers Linz are now bottom but you know uh, loads to be played as well I give you also the next three rounds because I'll be going on a vacation um, uh, the uh, ne next round is last play against last place Tirol, which is a game I they should win, but I have a little bit uh, worries because that's a place where we never perform well. But all the games have very clear favorites, maybe except for Austria winning against Wolfsburg, which is an interesting one because the Wolfsburg coach was the former Austria coach. And Rapid have the second away game in Linz. And here the other two rounds, last against Austria, you will get a video that I will shoot relatively soon. Um, and then when we come back, Lask will play at home to lose to now. And then there is also the big um, one there between Red Bull Salzburg and Rapid, which is probably the kind of biggest game, not from fans, uh, but overall. In any case, let me know what you thought about this round. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!